Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise from the upright is beautiful. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his work is done in truth. We love our righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The Lord looks from heaven. He sees all the children of men. From the place of his dwelling, he looks on all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashions our hearts individually. He considers all our works. Our souls wait for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Our hearts shall rejoice in him. Because we have trusted in the holy man. But let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us, just as we know that we do. Our second lesson is from the book of Romans. We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen. It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died. More than that, who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, hardship, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, sword? No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels or demons, neither the present, the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Our third lesson is from the book of John. Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey what I command, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> you may be not only are you going to need your song books, you're also going to need your Bible books. Open your rusty, dusty, trusty Bible book to John. Chapter 21. John chapter 21. There are three words in the Greek language for love. Agape, which is God's blessed, sacred, holy love for us. Phileo, which is brotherly love. You get the name Philadelphia. And Arako, which is a husband, wife, Love. Well, actually, it was four. Choco de Yale, which is a love of chocolate. But there's a little, not sure about that, but I think it's there. What's the first commandment? Anybody remember? The first love commandment. The Lord our dear God. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and all thy soul, and all thy might. That's about a love. That was so important that the Jewish people, the Jewish men, actually wore a phylactery, which was a little box that they put on their forehead in a little strap. You can still see them occasionally, not, not all anymore, but occasionally. And the purpose of that, that was one of the things in it to remind them that God loved them. That was on their, their forehead. They had it on their posts, and some of them had it on their wrists or on their arms. But 
But it was so important that they carried it around that they were to love God with all their heart and all their soul. And don't do that breaking or all the way So, why would we love God? Carol was talking about love in Sunday school, by the way. I think everybody was there. Come to Sunday school. We need the people like it's a good class. Why should we love God? Anybody? Because he first loved us. Because he first loved us. Yeah. John, first John 4.19. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's a lot. And you know, I was thinking the other day, we miss that so much. We read over it and we don't realize what Jesus did for us. Jesus came to earth and he lived a perfect life and he died on the cross and yada 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 and he raised from the dead. He suffered. And he was beaten and ridiculed and humiliated and pounded on him and suffered to the point that he didn't want to do it. He was afraid. Jesus was scared. Jesus was out in Gethsemane on his knees, sweating blood, crying, Father, if there's any way, take it away. He was scared. He knew what was going to happen. That's how much they loved us. And that's why we should love them. Our grandkids and our kids and children love us because we first loved them. Think about that. They love us because we first loved them. Before they were born, we loved them. We were expecting them, excited and, and waiting for them. And, and you just couldn't wait to hug them and kiss them. And, and so we taught them how to love because we poured our love down on them. It's easy to love somebody that loves you. And God loved us first. But it's interesting because I failed, and, and, and I may be the only one here, but I fail so often to tell God that I love Him. And sometimes you don't think about it, but I, I was thinking just, just, just this past week, how much you want to hear your kids tell you they love you, and your grandkids tell you they love you. It's so important. If you see your grandkids and you want to become friends, I love you. And you pick them up and you hug them and you pat them and, and, and show that love back. But it's so important to hear those words. You want to hear your husband, your wife, your daughter, your son mention those words. I love you. And when it isn't there, it, it, it's kind of a, an empty spot that comes in there. Now our family says that a lot. We have a close family. And we talk almost every day, sometimes twice and three times a day. But we never hang up the phone without saying I love you. That's just an automatic. And occasionally one of us have missed that and in confusion and you hang up and the phone will ring and say, I love you. Okay. Just just that little wasn't there. And and so they put it there. And and it's it's interesting because we just so often don't do it. How do we show God we love him? How can we show God that we do? Obey His commands. Obey His commands. Tell Him we love Him. Serve Him. Tell Him we love Him. Tell Him we love Him through what? How? Um, like going to the food tank, like going to your neighbor. Yes. 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 By serving Him. That serving Him. How else? Spending time with Him. Spending time with Him, yes. Spending a, How much time do you actually spend with God? It should be 24-7. It should be. It should be. But when you think about it, I don't want to tell you how much time I do. Because it's not enough. God should be in our hearts and our minds all the time, 24-7 and we ought to see and recognize the things that He does. And we ought to mention those thank yous. I always had a thing when I was working on gas dryers. Um, gas dryers are, are kind of spooky. And anytime you're working with gas, you have the you know, possibility of an explosion. 
and I would fix a gas dryer, and I would have it ready to go, and I'd turn it on and say, okay, Lord, make this sucker work. And when I turned it on and it lit and it did what it's supposed to, I said, thank you, God. And I was sincere, I was real, because he was scared. But we need to do that. We need to recognize and mention that to God anytime anything he does for us. We need to say thank you, God. Thank you, God. We sit out on our deck in the morning about 6.30. You can come by our house and we'll be out on the deck or on the, on the front porch with a cup of coffee. And we watch the deer come through the field across the road and up through our yard and up on the other side. And you hear the birds start to sing. And I sit there and say, thank you, God. I think they are so pretty to watch. And God has just given me that little blessing in the morning to, to see that around. And so we thank Him for that. And that's what God wants to hear. He wants to hear our thank yous and our love and our cares. Our families uh, have a way of showing and seeing that love and recognizing that love. When you do something for your kids or your grandkids, and they tell somebody else, isn't that neat? You do something good for them and they run over and say, you know what grandma did for me? You know what Papa did for me? You know what mom did for me? That shows you that they're recognizing and seeing that love that you have. And again, thank you so I was in, in uh, State College, Pennsylvania. That's a good ways up the road on an install. My daughter had a dentist appointment. And uh, right before she got there, she had a black tie. And she rolled into the parking lot on a flat tire. And she told the dentist, and he said, What are you going to do? She said, I'm going to call my husband. And uh, he said, Well, is she going to come fix it? She said, I don't know. But if you don't, I'll call my dad. And he will. And he said, Where's your dad? And he said, State College, Pennsylvania. And she said, Well, the doctor said, He's certainly not going to come down here from State College and fix a flat tire. She said, Yes, he will. I thought, How cool. She didn't know I wouldn't. <laughs> but it was neat that she thought that I would. I probably would. But that's the that's the love, and that's what God wants us to do. Uh, our relationship with God has got to be a telling, sharing relationship, not just a one-sided relationship. So often. Look at your Bible books in John 21, 15 through 17. I'm going to have to show you this, guys, because we're running out of time. Anybody remember the story? Jesus had died buried and was resurrected. And he appeared several different times to different people in different groups. At this particular time, the apostles were all held up in a room together. Half of them were scared. Half of them had no idea what was going to happen next. It was difficult. They wanted to serve God. They were serve God. Their God died. Jesus was dead. Now he's back. But what are we going to do? What are we waiting for? What's the deal here? And old Peter, I love him. Peter said, you know what? Y'all do what you want to do, I'm going to go fishing. That's what Peter did. He's a fisherman. And so off he goes, and the rest of them said, hey, we're with you. And off they go down the road, they get in their boat, they go fishing, they're fishing all night, he goes to and, and they didn't catch anything. You ever fished all night? Not caught anything? I have. And Jesus, there was a person on shore and he yelled at them and they said, Hey, y'all caught anything? He said, No. He said, Throw your net on the other side. And they said, Get out of my face. We've been fishing all night. We're professionals. We know what we're doing. And he said, Just throw your net on the other side. And he did. And what happened? Yeah. They got more fish than they'd ever caught. And they had to drag them in. And when they got into shore, here was Jesus on shore, had the hibachis going, nice charcoal fire, everything's ready to go, the bridge there, the side dishes are there, sauerkraut, and they bring in the fish, and they fry the fish for breakfast. Can you see it now? Can you see it now? Can, yeah, I mean, you, you picture it. And, and so they went in and they had breakfast, and it was so cool. And they were having a good time, having a good breakfast, 
Jesus was there, sun's coming up, beautiful day, everything is under control, and everybody's happy, and Jesus walks over to Peter and he says, Hey, come here. He walks over, and Jesus says, Peter, you love me? You know I love you, Lord. Jesus looks at him again and he says, Peter, you love me. Peter says, Yeah, you're okay. Sure, I love you. And then he looks at him the third time. And he says, Peter, do you love me? And he says, Look, I'm tired of this now. I already told you I love you twice. Now we gotta run over this thing again? Yes, I love you. Now what? There's a little controversy. Some people say that Jesus used different words when he did that. That the first time he said it, he said, Peter, do you agape me? And Peter answered back, Lord, I phileo you. And he asked him again, do you agape me? And he answered back, I phileo you. I love you like a brother, like a, like a friend. And in the third time, Jesus said, do you phileo me? And Peter said, but there's a good chance, and that is neat and I like it, but there's a good chance that they were speaking Aramaic. In Aramaic, and we have one word to go. And that's a good chance that's what they were speaking. But the idea is this. When Jesus called Peter out and asked him, do you love me? Peter remembered when he did not in Christ. And he said, do it. And that all that stuff runs through your mind. You have this when you get caught. And all that stuff's going through each body. And, and he's thinking, I do, but yeah, I, I, I love you. And then he asked him again, do you love me? He said, feed my sheep. Now, feeding a sheep is not that bad a job. You go out each day, you put them in a little coffee can full of food, they eat it, everybody's happy. He asked him the second time, do you love me? And he said, Tend my lambs. Tending is a lot harder than feeding. Tending is taking care of and raising and, and nurturing and cleaning and, and doing all the things that are involved in it. And when he asked you the third time, this is what's neat. This is what I want you to get. Yeah. When Jesus asked him he, the third time, do you, and I'm going to use their words, do you phileo me? And Peter said, yes, I believe it. Jesus was coming down to where Peter was. And he was going to meet Peter at that point and take him to where he wanted him to be. So many times we lie to God. I do. I do. I sit there in the porch and, and, and I'm praying and I say all kinds of stuff. And I don't mean it. I don't know. And, and, and you get confused sometimes. You get scared sometimes. And you're praying and you're praying and you're praying and you don't see an answer. And, and, and all of these things are happening and you think, why? What, what, what's with all this? And Jesus met Peter where he was. If we don't admit to God where we are, we don't know where he is. So when we're in those points, I love the guy that said, Jesus said, do you believe? And he said, yes, I believe but help my unbelief. I believe, Eric. I really do. But there are times when, when I just want to believe a little bit more. I believe, but I just I want to believe a little bit more. I just, just can't wait. get it. And so this guy says, help my unbelief. Touch me. Show me. Give me that trust that I can love you. So when we're in a situation, remember that God loves us and He's going to use us, but be honest with Him. If you're having trouble believing, tell Him you're having trouble believing. If you're praying and, and, and you're saying, God, I prayed for Susie for a year and a half and she's not healed. Come on, man, what's up? You're God. You can do this. That's okay. You can do this. But... We need to let them know. 
What did he do with Peter? Peter went out to be his first sermon. 3,000 people. That's it. The first thing Jesus told him when he asked him if he loved him, he said, feed my sheep. He went out and fed the sheep and 3,000 got saved. The second time he asked him, he said, tend my sheep. Peter took care of all of those people in that. He was the leader in that group in Jerusalem. And then Peter went on to tend that flock and start churches and was known worldwide for being that shepherd. So Jesus will meet us where He is. God will meet us where we are. And all we need to do is be honest with Him and to share with Him and to tell Him what's on our minds or what's on our hearts. And He'll take us where He wants us to go. He gave us the tools. Let me wrap this up, guys. He gave us the tools that we can use. 1 John 1, 9, He gave us forgiveness. Mark 9, 24. If you lack wisdom, ask for wisdom. I love that. I am so dumb. Sometimes I'm dumber than a bag of hammers. And, and you've got to ask God for wisdom. 1 Peter, casting your cares on Him. We need to learn to cast our cares on God because He cares for us. He'll take them by and drag them around. In Hebrews 13, 5, He'll be with us always. He'll never leave us or forsake us. So that's what we need to do as far as loving God. Why would we not love God again? All of those things that He's given us. And if you're having trouble with agape in God, I do. I don't know what to do. It's difficult sometimes. But if you're having trouble with that, we need to remember that first commandment. Remember they used to carry it on their foreheads? Maybe we need to do that. Maybe I need to get one of those little black ones and carry it. Some people carry it little cross in their pocket. Some people wear a wristband. Same thing. A reminder. The first commandment, the love of the Lord that God. We need to tell Him how much we love Him. We want to increase that relationship we need to talk, spend time with. We need to be honest when we talk with Him. We need to show Him that by our actions, by the food bank, by the various other things that we do. We need to show Him that we love Him. Saying and being real is two different things sometimes. So we need to put actions behind what we do. And then if we do those things, and if we go to God and if we ask Him, it's that simple. He will meet us where we are. And He'll take us to where He wants us to be. It's my desire as we go from here that you would think about agape love. Think about God and that agape love He has for me and all that entails. And that I need to share that back with Him just as our family and friends share that with us. Be a lonesome world. Nobody ever told you they love you. Be a crummy world if you dealt with that each day. God wants to hear from us. He wants to know. He wants to hear. He wants to hear those words. And what is even better than that, what is better than having your kids tell you they love you, your grandkids tell you they love you, is when they tell somebody else. It's so neat when, when I meet somebody in my garden, I meet somebody and they'll say, oh, I thought you were going to meet you. She was telling me all you did and all you do and all you can do and all these things and you just, just kind of swell up and people be. We need to tell people about Christ. And God does that. That's what makes God proud. That's what makes God happy. That's what makes God just 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 beam when we go out and tell other people, not only do I love you, but I'm telling the world that I love you. Because I want them to love you. God will meet you where you are. And he will take you to where he wants you to be. We need to agape him. God. And think about that. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day and this place and time. We thank you for your word and we ask that you would implant it in our minds. Teach us, Father, as we scramble through this sermon this morning. We ask that you would just allow some of it to stick on the sticky side of our minds. Help us to use it. Help us to remember. Help us to agape.
page 